I painted this, this and this in a single weekend. Welcome to The Basic Brush, I'm Sam. Whether it's board games or miniature games, whether it's for a tournament or just for a cool game night, there is nothing better than actually having painted models. And in this video, I'm going to show you the five top ways that I use to get my armies done in plenty of time. Number one, make a plan. Have you ever been in this scenario? This is Bellacore, and I have spent so much time staring at him. I painted the wings kind of on the fly, they came out really nice, and then I got stuck with indecision about what to do next. So now he sort of sits here, not ready to lead my slaves to darkness, not really ready to do anything. What I should have done is I should have made a plan. Now, recently, Matt Geary from Geek Pride, link down below, gave me this awesome box set. It's the Greyjoy starter set from A Song of Ice and Fire. And I wanted to get this done, painted, ready to play with him. The first thing I did is spend 30 minutes to an hour doing some research. It might sound like a lot of time, and there's no need to spend this much time on it. But look up photos, find the colour schemes you want, and write them down. So I planned where I was going to do the colours for the cloaks, what colours I was going to use for the gloves, what colour I was going to do for the weapons. This is going to speed it up a lot in the long term. It's also really great to write the steps down, because there is nothing more satisfying than crossing them off. You feel like you've accomplished something, even if the miniature doesn't look like it's changed that much. Listen to this. Now that is model ASMR. Number two, play a little game or do a social media update. For me, I find the motivation is a real fickle thing. And without routine, I struggle to keep that momentum going. Well, there's nothing better than stopping and doing something with those models. Maybe it's playing a game, such as me playing the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures with Matt. Maybe it's posting a social media update. But what you want to do is have something done for the next time you post or the next time you play. I had my models based, then I had them zenithal, then I had them base coated, and then finally I had them highlighted. And you know what? Matt every time said, they're looking great, because he noticed the change that had happened. Number three, don't see it, don't paint it. There's a wonderful rumour from back in the day that the heavy metal artists for Warhammer only painted the front of miniatures that were going to be photographed for the front of the miniatures box. Nowadays that seems absurd because of course you get photos of the back of your model. You even get the 360 degrees rotating models. But we didn't have that back in the day. Heck, we had lead poisoning back in the day. So if the professionals didn't do it, why are you? Take this model. You'll see I've zenithly highlighted it using black, using grey and using white. All the spots that are black, I'm not going to paint. Because I like the shadow effect that's on there and nobody's going to be looking at the model from that angle anyway. So why waste your time worrying about it? If there's a crevice that you can't reach, leave it black. It's fine. Nobody needs to know. It'll be our little secret. Paint the army or unit, not the model. We are really lucky in this hobby to have amazing painters like Angel Geraldes and we've even got YouTube miniatures like Miniac and Squidmar and they paint amazing stuff. Now, I truly wish to paint like that someday, but that process takes a long time. A unit in a rank and flank game definitely looks best when there's a certain colour scheme for all the models. To use this Greyjoy model as an example, Notice here, there's these buckles, there's these medallions, there's all these fiddly extras. Can you see them on the tabletop? I can't. Can you? And I think this is something that's grown in the hobby. We think that every model has to be a masterpiece. It doesn't. In fact, it shouldn't. Because when a model has that much detail on it, it becomes lost in this muddy coloured scheme. Take care of my bruised brotherhood. I went with a nice solid colour scheme of just purples and pinks. Then I added a splash colour with the green on my weapons and my eyes. And finally I highlighted the bone protrusions. Now I have never had an opponent say that they didn't like playing against this army. It's better than painting against plastic and it only took me a couple of hours to paint. So paint for what it will look like A on the tabletop but B what looks good as a unit not as a single model. Lastly, the right technique for the right job. Here's my quick rundown of five techniques and how you could use them. 
Spray cans are great for undercoating. In fact, that's kind of what their point is, but you can actually use them for zenithal highlighting. Take this Glockin model. First, I spray it black, then gray, then add a little bit of white. You don't need an air gun to do this, and it's really gonna help me with knowing which parts to paint, and which parts to have light, and which parts to have dark. Airbrushes can be used for blocking in colors, making more exact zenithal. Heck, you can even use it to paint entire armies. I thoroughly recommend that if a friend has one, you should give it a go, because for me, I actually really love using it. Contrast paints. Contrast paints are fantastic, but not on large flat surfaces. Instead, consider using them on bumpy areas, like on this Glockkin skin. It's perfect, it gets into all those nooks and crannies whilst drawing back from the edges. Dry brushing. Dry brushing is fantastic when again you have a textured area. I can combine the dry brushing with the contrast paint I just used and it creates a nice highlight over the top of the details that I've used. Lastly, the brush. I actually find this my least favourite way of painting miniatures and much prefer using any of the other techniques because they're the fastest. But the brush has its place, as all things do. This for me is highlighting the miniatures as well as painting any sick freehand that you want on the model. The most important thing is remembering you're painting for you, don't paint for other people's. If you've enjoyed this video, consider giving us a like and a subscribe. And most importantly, remember, battle the backlog.